Hey everybody, we have a special thing to make for you today. We sure Mo's do. Mo's gonna make it, I'm gonna watch. It's an old <laughs> Southern favorite and it's called chicken and dumplings. Have you ever had chicken and dumplings? I have, but I've not made them. Mm -hmm. I've tried. Did your mom make them? No, mama makes them, yeah. Okay, so most, most Southern moms, you know, made the chicken and dumplings and grandparents um, we are using bone-in chicken breast today that we got at the grocery store. A lot of people use the full chicken or the whole chickens, mm -hmm. but um, I just got three um, bone-in breasts. The bone-in gives you a better broth, and so we're going to need that broth to be good and rich because that's what makes right. a good chicken and dumpling. Exactly dumpling. right. So my brother's going to come over and eat with us tonight and he his favorite thing is chicken and dumplings so he's gonna be excited yes he will love this he will be excited so so are these gonna are your dumplings the kind that you roll out and cut and they okay. are these are from scratch now i'll okay. be honest y'all uh, when i was younger i didn't i like to cut corners a lot in the kitchen because i was busy and i didn't have time mm -hmm. so i would take the canned biscuits and roll them out and just cut them up but we're going to actually make a biscuit dough tonight and um, cut them ourselves. Okay. Scratch. Yay. Yeah. So Very we'll, be, we'll be back shortly. We're going to let this um, these chicken breasts boil for probably 20, 25 minutes, get them good and done. And then we'll be back to show you the next step. See you soon. Okay, y'all. While the chicken is finishing up its bowl, we're going to go ahead and make the dough for our dumplings. Yay, okay. I never made the dough. Oh, it's just biscuit dough. It is biscuit dough, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I made biscuits before. It's but... just biscuit dough, okay. that's what we're using. So I've got four cups of self-rising flour in this bowl. Um, to that I'm going to add, and I should have kept that spoon a while ago. Short one. I'm going to add one third cup of, as my grandmother called it, grease, but one third cup of shortening gonna add that to it right in the middle and you can do one of two ways you can do the old-timey way where you use your hands or you know so I think that's what I'm gonna do because it'll, right. yeah. it'll be fun yeah it'll be get in there and yes so you just get that shortening all let me pull the camera over okay so we can see in okay. in the bowl so what I'm doing is just breaking up that shortening in the bowl Mixing it in with the flour. Now it doesn't really stick to your hands. That's just flour uh, because the Crisco is sticking to the flour oh, yeah, instead okay. of my hands, which is nice. Gotcha. I didn't even realize that. Yeah. So um, that was how much shortening? One third. Four, cup. One third. Mm -hmm. One third, third cup, cup of shortening. shortening, and I'm just mixing it in, blending it in with my hands. Now the fun part comes when you add your buttermilk. These are going to be buttermilk. If I were making biscuits, they'd be buttermilk biscuits. But they're gonna be buttermilk dumplings. It's gonna be the best kind. Mm -hmm. kind. Yeah, do you drink buttermilk? No, 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 no. I don't either. <laughs> I don't either. My daddy loved to drink buttermilk. He would crumble up saltine crackers, crackers in a glass of buttermilk, and that was his snack. Well, my my dad would crumble up cornbread. Yes, in cornbread his too. It, but if daddy didn't have <laughs> cornbread, he'd use saltine crackers. <laughs> Cornbread's definitely his first choice, I'm sure. Okay, I think I've got this all, you see, I don't know if you can see it on the video, but it's all real coarse it's, now. The yeah. flour is coarse, of course. Of course, of course. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is make a, and this bowl is really bigger than it should be. I'm just gonna make a, a hole in the middle. And that's where I'm gonna pour in my buttermilk. You made a well. A well and if you really wanna see a biscuit maker, y'all go and watch Brenda Gant make her biscuits. That's how my mother-in-law made them. I'm not a pro at it like Brenda is, but I have done it this way many times. And I just, you just start pulling in that flour into the buttermilk. This is one, what did I say, one and a third cup of buttermilk? I don't remember that. Okay. We'll check that. I think it'll it's, be in the recipe. Actually, I think it's one and a half cup. Okay, and so it's starting to Starting to turn into some dough there. So you just add a little at a time is what you're saying. And yeah. mix it in a little, a little at, a at a time. Yeah. I 
think I'm ever done this way. Really? You know me, I just pour my pour it all in together and start yes, going Yes, I do know you, baby. <laughs> and you know what? That's okay. We're not going to judge you. If it We're turns not judging, out. are we, y'all? <laughs> We got to judge you, girl. Be okay. <laughs> I have never eaten anything that Deb has cooked that is not delicious. So. There, there's cooking, been a few things. <laughs> you know, cooking is one of those things where now there's some baking rules, you know, mm -hmm. that you kind of have to stick to. Say uh, flour and bake in a cake right. or butter in mm -hmm. a cake or make sure but, those are all exact. Mm -hmm. But cooking is an art, y'all. And Debbie's an artist. I haven't ever thought of myself as an what artist. About I that? like that. I like that too. <laughs> I always wanted to be an artist. Yep, so there you go. And I'm going to add the rest of that buttermilk. So these are almost done. They, it's and now I'm just doing this like crazy because I'm in a hurry. Because I'm like, okay, I'm through with this. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Maybe you need to slow down Woo! just a tad. <laughs> yeah, just a little bit. Somebody's going to have to clean up this mess. Who? <laughs> I need to get my house cleaned up. They will come clean it up for us. No, he don't clean up my messes. Now he's really good about keeping his, his mess own, clean. Up. But man, he don't like cleaning up other people's messes. All right, y'all. Now I've got a very sticky dough here now, but that's okay. Yes, it is. That's how it's supposed to be. All right. So now I'm gonna take both hands and just kind of knead this Let's a see little how bit. Works. And I'll knead it again before we roll it out. So we're going to wait a few minutes till we're ready to. We are because we want to get these um, for chicken breasts done. And so, okay. So it's the dough's ready for us so to roll out dough. in a few minutes when we're when we're going to combine our dough and right. our chicken, right? Exactly. So that's step two in the process. Step two in we'll the chicken back. and dumplings. We'll be right back. Okay, guys, we've got our chicken boiled. We have our dough made for our dumplings. And um, we're going to go on to the next step, which is getting the broth ready to drop in the dumplings. So it's not just ready after you take the chicken out. You've got to do something. Well, too. what I'm going to do, and y'all don't, if you use the skinless, um, boneless skinless, you don't have to do this step. But what I'm going to do real quick, and I should have already done that, is I'm going to drain or strain this because that chicken did have bones in it. I didn't know you did. I didn't. I didn't know you did that. Yeah, I'm gonna strain it just in case, and it gets all that. Um, what do you call it? Goopy stuff out. <laughs> Goopy stuff. But definitely, there are no bones in here because I did boil that chicken for quite a long time because the breasts, y'all, were huge. Look here. <laughs> That is one huge chicken breast. I would hate to see the chicken. <laughs> really? The chicken. So, Deb, if you will, um, okay. chop up that onion for me. All right. We're going to go ahead and turn this stove eye back on and get our broth boiling. So, we're going to add so, some things to okay. our, we're going to add some things to our broth. Mm -hmm. Was there, I mean, chicken and dumplings is something that, it's a yes. favorite, uh, probably a very big Southern favorite, but uh -huh. was there a reason that you you wanted to make chicken and dumplings? Or? Well, um, it's not the most healthy thing, and Deb and I are trying to eat a little more healthy. So, but um, I was on the phone with my brother on Saturday, and he, um, he lost his wife back in February unexpectedly. And having a really tough time with that. So um, I asked him, I said, if Kim were to fix your favorite meal, what would that be? And he immediately, I mean, he didn't hesitate. He said, chicken and dumplings. So I said, next week, I'm going to make you some chicken and dumplings. So they may not be as good as Kim's were, but we'll see. He'll like them. Anyway. He's getting his favorite meal today. So he's going to be happy. Right. So... Excuse me, y'all. So I am going to add to my broth a cream of celery soup. And it doesn't have to be cream of celery. It can be cream of chicken. But um, I didn't have any celery salt, which goes in this normally. And so I thought, oh, I like cream of celery. Because really what this is for is to make your broth creamy. I, 
I interchange those cream of soups a lot of times. I do too. Times. I do too. So I'm we've got one can of cream of celery soup. And then we're gonna add, I don't know if y'all have ever used this. I had never heard of it. This is good stuff. It is better than bouillon is the brand, but it's a chicken base, which is a very potent chicken broth. And it, it smells really, really it's good. I had mm -hmm. never heard of it. So I'm gonna add me a heaping tablespoon of that. I'm gonna add some of that to my pantry. Oh yeah, you should, for sure. So chicken, when else would you use it? Um, uh, any kind of chicken dish? Anything um, like use chicken broth in. Okay. Yeah, anything that you would put chicken broth in, you can use this as a replacement. Can't get it out of my spoon, damn. Let's see if I can. I got it. Turn the camera down so we can see in the okay. pan. All right. There's the broth that we're working on right now. Okay. I'm gonna add just a dash of Lowry seasoned salt because it did call for celery salt. I didn't have any celery salt. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of this Lowry's. You can't go wrong with Lowry's. I've, yeah, uh, Lowry's mm -hmm. is good. It's good stuff. Okay, so I am bringing this back up to a bowl, baby. Let's start it up. You see that chicken, uh, that cream of celery, I mean, is already making it creamy. Yeah. And then what's going to make it thick is when we add our um, noodles to it. Or our dumplings. dumplings. They're not noodles. <laughs> <coughs> me. Okay, a little salt and pepper. Probably about... Half a teaspoon of each. Right. It's looking yummy. It's gonna be yummy. Then I'm gonna add, I wish I had fresh thyme, but I don't, I only have this one. And actually, I think I have one open. Let me grab it real quick. Do you like thyme, Debbie? I, I don't know if I like it or not, I'll tell you the truth. You don't? Um, I don't know if I've used it very often. Well, y'all, all, all I have down here is ground time, so I guess I, I don't have any open. I have to find out the time all the time. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, this is just thyme and leaves, and it really does give it a good little flavor. But it also makes it real pretty. And you know, it's important. You eat with your eyes first, Debbie yeah, always says. Right. That's right. So I'm just gonna sprinkle some in there. Probably about a quarter teaspoon. Stir it up. If you wanted to, you could throw in a little sage. Yeah, you could. I love sage That's with it. any kind of chicken. Yeah. Okay, Deb, um, if you would, we'll start picking this chicken, chicken off. All right. And I'm gonna add these onions. So they can be cooking. So that's um, one small onion or half of a giant onion like we had. Our Vidalia onions came in here in Georgia. So we've got big old Vidalia onions. I don't think they grow them small, do you? I never saw a small Vidalia. Me either. So those of you who don't know about Vidalia, Georgia, that is where the sweetest onions come from. It's down in South Georgia. And every year, our basketball team here in our little hometown will sell them, and we, we like to get us a bag. Mo got me a bag this time. Got her a 10-pound bag. So we got plenty of onions. Yeah. Gosh, okay. This chicken does have a lot of chicken on it. It does. It's a lot of chicken. So I'm going to scoot you over okay. a minute. Now, y'all want to show you something. This is a pastry mat. Can you hear it? <laughs> Deb and I said a long time ago that we're not gonna we're not gonna try to promote her pampered chef business on our page. But I believe when there's a good product, I believe in telling people You've about, talk it. about it. This is my go-to pastry mat. It's from Pampered Chef. It's easy to clean up. It's huge. 
so you, you don't make a mess all over the place. I, I love it. One reason is some of those um, mats, when you fold them up, they won't lay out flat. It this is up. silicone and it rolls up and it rolls right back out. It, yeah. will not, it will not stay in a permanent rolled up position. So you can easily roll it up and store it. I actually roll my, uh, put my baking, uh, my rolling pin inside of it and roll it up together and store it in the cabinet. I love the way it. I put them together. Yeah, it's but, easy. I mean, you know, and it does. It rolls up and it stays rolled up. It has a lot of markings on the around mm -hmm. it. So if you're needing to measure a pie crust or something, you mm -hmm. can easily get the right I just size. Love it. I just, I wanted to show you all that before I flower it all up because I got <laughs> some flour here. And we're going to go ahead and roll out our dumplings, y'all. Okay, and I'm just going to smear this white lily flour around here. I haven't had dumplings in a really long time. I know, me either. Thank you, Rodney, for wanting dumplings. <laughs> yeah. So, um, anyway, I've got my heavy duty dough roller, roller, rolling pin. And then I'm just going to grab right now about half of this dough, half of this biscuit dough. So, we could actually make biscuits with, the, we sure with this could. dough if we want to. We sure could. Y'all, one day Debbie and I are going to make breakfast. And we're gonna fix biscuits and gravy. Debbie's and gonna make her chocolate, chocolate gravy. gravy. I don't know if y'all eat that or ever, ever even heard of it. I bet there's a few who eat it. Yeah, I think so. That's really good. It's like a dessert gravy. It is, but it's good. It's and, really um, good with biscuits. Yep, it really is. But this is the same recipe I'll use to make biscuits too. Okay. Alrighty. Flour that up good. If you noticed, I did uh, need that just a little bit. It didn't need a ton of it. And I'm gonna roll it out pretty thin because I don't like um, my dumplings real thick. So this is how my mom makes, oh, she, she doesn't roll <clears throat> hers out. She, she drops, drops, she does it. drop. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of people do that. Yeah, it's, I'm sure, uh, well, you don't have the step right here where you gotta roll it out. And, mm -hmm. um, so I guess it could be a little bit quicker. It is quicker. But I like it whenever they're thin. It is easier, but I like mine thinner. And when you drop them, they don't, they kind of curl up in a ball, it seems like. Yeah, they do, and they're kind of doughy. But right. if you get these pretty thin, they're not gonna be quite so doughy, right? right? So this is pretty thin. I mean, you see how thin yes, that is? Yes, it is thin. All right, what did I do with my cutter? Okay, another favorite tool. It's a little dough roll, dough cut. Dough I cutter. can't say it, <laughs> thank you, dough cutter. <laughs> and I'm just going to make me some strips. Excuse me. Still got that cough, y'all. The cough seems to stick around sometimes. <coughs> After a cold. Yeah. Just make some pretty edges. That would be great for um, pie crust. <coughs> it would. Is this, is this it pampered chip? I don't recognize it. Yes, this it is. It's an older one. Okay. It is. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. All right, now I'm going to cut them into squares. I don't know if they can see that or not, Deb. Okay, let me get my, um, let me dry my hands. Okay, so you don't have to use anything like this. You can just use a knife. But I saw that in my drawer and I thought, I'm going to use that. It's quicker and easier. And it really is easier. All right, so the camera woman's coming in. All right, so we got the strips. I'm going to go and I'm going to go back and kind of just cut them into rectangles here. Some of them might be squares. <laughs> Voila. That's it. All right. When now, this, okay, this is boiling. It is truly boiling. So that's good. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna put this butter in here. I'm gonna put a half a stick of butter in here, y'all. You don't have to but I'm going to. Why am I going to, Debbie? Um, it's going to make it um, <laughs> more it's flavorful. Yummy. <laughs> yes, it's yummy. Rich, more, it'll make it richer. Yep. Richer, just a butter, it gives it a buttery flavor. Yeah, I love that. 
You see how creamy that yep. is? It looks really good. Now it's not thick at all now, but what do you think is gonna happen when, when we add? Bed. Yeah, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give, give these a little bit more flour. Sprinkle a little flour on the, on the... Yep, so, so they'll be getting flowery. Okay. And I'm, I'm just gonna, gonna start in. dropping them in. I'm gonna make sure I've got this as high as it'll go for now. Now, when you drop in your dumplings, you don't want to stir them with a spoon. Because if you put a spoon in there and start stirring around, it's gonna tear up your dumplings. Huh. Okay. You gotta give them time to cook. So how long? Usually about four or five minutes. Okay. You can kind of tell. Boop, boop. Kind of looks like ravioli, don't it? Indeed, it doesn't it have is. anything in it. <laughs> doesn't have anything in there. I like the cut with the, the pastry cutter though. I do too. That's neat, isn't it? Yep. It's the first time I've ever used that on my dumplings. I've used it on pie crust. How are they looking in there? What do you think? It looks good. Uh-huh. And see, they do swell up on you. That's self-rising flour. That is what flour does, isn't it? Uh-huh. Okay, now, when do you put the chicken in? Last. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because it's already cooked and everything. So, you put it in last, and then you give it a good stir after that. Okay. Boop, boop. Kind of shake it around. So, will these um, do that after you've got the dough cooked? They're done, right? Right, they are done. Will it set for point. a while? Can you just let it set? You can. You can let it let it sit on the stove till you're ready to eat it. He's not going to be here for another hour, so we're going to go ahead and just leave them on simmer, and they'll be wonderful. So in the comments, y'all tell us about your dumpling experience. Have you ever had dumplings before? Have you made dumplings before? Now the Cracker Barrel restaurant has pretty Ooh, decent they do. I like theirs. chicken and dumplings. Yeah. But I tell you, there's nothing like these good old timey Southern cooks <laughs> and their homemade dumplings. I mean, I imagine they used to kill their own chicken too. So <laughs> we don't need that. Go that far. <laughs> I don't believe I could do it nowadays. I don't know what we'll do if we ever have to go back no. to those frontier days. I'm gonna be in trouble. I think I'll probably be a vegetarian. <laughs> I can grow vegetables, but I don't know if I can do the chicken part. Yep. I'm dying to put a spoon in there. I know. I'm I want not to see going what to. they look like. I'm not going to yet. I will in a minute. All right. So we need some more dough. We're gonna make more, more dumplings. Yeah, you okay. can't, you can't go wrong. I use the whole recipe for, oh, okay. for the dumplings. Will they all go in the same oh, pan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they will. Lots of dumplings. They're gonna be happy dumplings. <laughs> <laughs> we gonna be happy. <laughs> Hopefully, Rodney will be happy. I bet he will be. Yeah. Absolutely. So we got a plate full of chicken. Of chi we're gonna show them that too. chicken dip. Are we gonna put it all in it? Um, yeah. Plate full of chicken. It's only off of three little breasts. They weren't little. <laughs> I know, they were huge. I haven't quite finished, but that's most of it. You know, I was in a nutrition class last week um, at the Heart Institute where I go after I had my heart attack. And they said that nowadays the chicken that we are eating that comes from the chicken farms and all of that unless it is what is it range, range whatever free, range free, range or, free or organically grown or whatever you call it unless it's you know the really pricey kind <laughs> that none of us can afford the chicken that we get at the grocery store because it has so many hormones and things in it it is as bad for you as red meat Wow, that's, that's yeah. just crazy. I was shocked. I was like, oh my goodness. I always thought chicken was good for you. Well, I've eaten pretty much grilled chicken on every diet I've ever had. Me too. 
and I've always thought, man, I'm eating healthy. But then the nutritionist said, no. He said, you know, it's got as much fat in it as... That's hard to believe. I know, That's I can't crazy. believe it. I cannot believe it. Can we that. see them now? Give me a second. Almost. I see them a little bit. Can you see them? A little bit? I can, they're looking good. They are wow. dumpling up. They are dumpling up. I smell it too. It's really, I don't know if it's the time that I smell. It could be. I turned them down a little bit because. You want to be careful that you don't stick. Yeah, they don't stick or you don't pull they do have the way flour your, in there. Oh, your oh, yeah. liquid. They just smell good. I may wind up putting that other half of stick of butter in there. <laughs> but y'all, this is how you make dumplings. This is a good recipe. I'm going to try it myself. You've made it look so easy, Mo. Okay, we're going to be back in just a minute and show you the final product. Okay. Stay tuned. Okay, guys. The dumplings have dumpled. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm going to see if Already we can, one. Let's see if we can so, so, show so these good. to you, how well they thickened up. Deb, go, and give us a stir. We went back. The last thing we did was add the chicken. Mm, there's a, and then we let them simmer for that. about 10 minutes on low. It's really creamy. Mm -hmm. Gosh. And they are good Probably the ready. best dumplings I've ever tasted. Oh, my goodness, Deb. Really? I would say they're better than Cracker Barrels. Cracker Barrel may not like that, but yeah. hey, I think they're better than Cracker that's Barrels. That's awesome. That's a compliment. So uh, let's get one out of here and we'll let y'all taste it virtually. Here's our spoons. Okay. That's right here. Here's the Okay. All right. Here's here is the dumpling. Get this little chicken with it. Oh, it's it is hot. hot, so we gotta wait a second. <laughs> Do you see me just crying at my pie hole? <laughs> but with well, the recipe is gonna be posted, so y'all have got to try this. Mm -hmm. mm. They're just really, really good. Um, we, you, I don't know if you know, but we've been posting things on uh, YouTube. We have a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Cooking with Mo and Deb over there too. So if you'd like to watch things on YouTube, you can find these there. Yes, we would love to have, have, you, them, but. have you subscribed to our YouTube yes. channel. Um, anyway, but yeah. Mm. Good? Mm-hmm. Okay, Deb says they're better than Cracker Barrel, y'all. Two That's thumbs okay. up. <laughs> Two thumbs up, four <laughs> thumbs here. <laughs> All right, y'all, make you some chicken and dumplings. It's comfort food, good for your tummy. Oh, so good. Try them. Bye, guys.